So this video was a request from the comment section of another video when I mentioned the concept of E-R-O-E-I in another video, and that stands for Energy Return Over in Energy Invested. Now you're probably wondering what that is going to mean, and it's a math formula. So the energy returned is the numerator, and the energy invested is the denominator. The most common use for this formula is evaluating the usefulness of energy resources. A high number is good. The higher the number, the better in terms of the energy payoff for the energy invested. Anything lower than one represents an actual net loss of energy, using more energy to obtain a resource than it was ultimately worth in energy. What happens? There are those online who post exaggerated claims of energy reserves usually oil resources. They say we're not running out of oil, that we're always finding new oil, and that all that is required is that for the price of oil to rise in order to make those developments profitable. The truth is there's another barrier besides profit profitability that we need to consider when we're talking about these oil reserves, most of which aren't conventional oil. There are things like oil sands or oil shale that need considerable extra work before they are anywhere close to useful to our existing energy infrastructure. The heart of the matter is this. For an energy resource, if mining the resource or the recovery activity needed to acquire that resource exceeds the energy value of the resource you're recovering, then for all intents and purposes, it's no longer an energy resource. You've burnt more energy getting the resource than you have obtained in gathering it. So as a result, a lot of the oil that we list as oil reserves aren't really energy resources. You might speculate that in some future technology will allow us to recover those resources more efficiently, but that would just be speculation. It doesn't make those reserves into real resources we can count on to fuel the economy today. What it comes down to is much of this unconventional oil produced today has a very low energy return, or even an energy return less than one, because the amount of energy burned to obtain it. One of the main energy sources burned to obtain this oil is natural gas, which is often found alongside oil, but is difficult to transport, and it varies wildly in price depending on the part of the world you're in. Natural gas requires specialized transport and containment methods that usually aren't available in the places natural gas is found. It's also very difficult to transport natural gas compared to oil since it needs to be stored under pressure to create liquefied natural gas. Even though it might make sense to transport natural gas from North America to Asia or Europe where it's used as a heat source and the price is several times higher, the expense and lack of transport makes this unprofitable. As a result, you often see flares burning away this natural gas alongside oil production. The natural gas simply isn't profitable. What oil producers, producers are doing is using natural gas on site as a fuel source to produce more oil, which is easier to transport and store in the existing infrastructure. So you may end up using some oil that has burnt several times its energy value in order to be produced. There is an economic bias towards oil because it's so much more versatile as an energy resource, and it utilizes our pre-existing and very expensive to replace infrastructure. Politically, this is a double-edged sword. Lefty environmentalist types love the concept because it throws another wrench into the gears of economists who say we'll effectively never run out of fossil fuels. It cuts back the other way, too, when it becomes easy to point out that renewable energy resource darlings, like solar, have a very low ERI number two, usually between four and six. It might take eight to ten years for a solar panel to make back the energy that was required just to reduce it in the first place. Wind fares a little bit better at ten, 15 to 20, but both of these technologies have their own limitations, sun and wind. Naturally, the best listed ERI numbers you'll find come from situations where the technologies were operated under ideal conditions, places with lots of sun for solar and lots of wind for wind. Some people include the cost of backup batteries in the system to store the power, others don't. Some count the supposed value of the recycled materials during decommission, some don't. Add to this, it's currently a lot more expensive to use the electricity they produce as a transport fuel than it is 
and our electricity system for distribution is not up to the load requirement needed to operate such task. Usually is the case, nothing is as simple as one side or the other in a political debate would have you believe. So in the grand scheme of things, why is EROI important? Well, historically, the EROI of, for energy resources has been getting lower over time. When oil was first discovered in shallow wells, it had an, a number of over 100. It's these easy energy resources that made the tremendous growth of the industrial age possible. Growth that our economic institutions and the population at large have become dependent on to keep up the status quo. ERI is a large reason why some Middle Eastern oil resources are fought over. Yes, we can produce oil in Texas for 60 to 80 dollars a barrel, but it can be produced in Saudi Arabia for a dollar a barrel with far cheaper conventional methods. That also would play itself out in the ERI numbers. This is what makes those resources economical to use and fight over. The fear is ultimately that our civilization can be constrained to a much lower standard of living unless we can discover energy resources that consistently deliver a better EROI than the alternatives do today before we run out of the high EROI fuel resources we have left. As we go down the curve, even if we produce more energy, a larger and larger share of that energy will be required to get tomorrow's energy, leading to higher prices, lower availability for energy, and every other industry that produces the things people want and need to live. The medieval farmer could expect to get four grains of wheat, wheat for every one he sowed. Our unconventional solar panels are much better than that. Our conventional solar panels are much better than that. Can society expect to sustain itself with a much higher tax on its energy demands? Either way, anyone presenting energy figures to you one way or the other isn't considering all the variables unless they figure in EROI. A free pizza you have to pick up from the moon is not a free pizza.